Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another how-to video. In this video, we are going to take a look at a render setup and how to create ID mats using this tool. Let's get started. A while ago, I recorded a clip about multipass rendering using Nuke and Arnold, and I received a lot of questions about how to create ID mats and holdouts and ambient occlusion. So I thought, well, it would be a good idea to just record a video and talk about that only using the very useful render setup, because that's the method that I use and I prefer and it's non-destructive procedural and it's very easy to set up. You don't need to create a separate Maya scene for it. So everything can be done in one scene. So let's see how we can achieve that. I am going to open the render setup, which is right the button right next to the hypershade. That render setup allows you to um, divide your scene into layers and then populate them using collections and put certain objects into each collection. You can group certain objects and put them onto a collection or you can specify or target a particular attribute and then overwrite that attribute per layer. I know it sounds a bit confusing, so let's get to work and I'm going to show you how to do this in practice. Now, first things first, I would like to have my ID colors set up in the hypershade and per layer we can produce three ID mats, green, blue and red. So let's create those first and we can get back to this window and link them to our render layer. I'm gonna go to Hypershade. We need four to begin with per layer. The first one is going to be a black surface shader. So I'm just gonna type in surface shader and it's a Maya node. The good thing about that is you're not relying on Arnold node if you're using Renderman, for example. You can still follow this tutorial and get the job done. I'm gonna be very intentional with my naming convention. So I'm going to call this one black and SS for surface shader, change the shading group of it as well, black surface shader and shading group. The reason I'm renaming the shading group at the same time is because that's the one that will get connected to your render layer. So not only you need to know how you name it, but also you kind of need to memorize it because you need to type it in in a second. I'm going to select this control C, control V and create a red channel. So all I need to do is just to change this from black to red, black to red, and simply change the out color to red. Then select this, control C, control V, moving this down. And this one is going to be our green channel. So green, and then green, changing the color to green, going to move down a little, control V, obviously this one is going to be blue, and surface shader to blue. Don't need to do this per layer, you can create this once and apply this structure to multiple layers to get multi ID passes which is very, very convenient. You can even use the same method to apply ambient occlusion to your layer if you, in case, want to export ambient occlusion as well. So, all right, this is all set up. Probably just to be similar with all of these, I'm just going to turn this into uppercase. Now, going back to the scene I have, I'm going to bring up the render setup and let's create our render. I'm going to call this matte layer. And within that, I need to create a collection. Now, first things I need to do is to bring the entire scene onto this layer so I can assign shaders to individual bits. Now, there's one way of doing it, and that is to create the scene and go to add 
and add it to a layer. However, this is not my preferred way of doing things because if you change the hierarchy, you may run into broken links and some weird issues. What I noticed is a procedural way of doing this using a filtering system inside render setup can be way more effective. To do that, I'm gonna move from transfer into custom. And in order to bring a type in here, as, he, as the node says, you can easily drag and drop the shape node in there to identify the type of node that you need to create. So I'm gonna right click in the outliner and enable the shape node. Go into a shape node of any object, drag and drop it onto types, and that gives me the name of the filter, what type I would like to filter from this scene. You don't need to do it every single time, you can just simply type in mesh from next time, but that's how you actually identify your filter type. Now for include, I, I would like to get the entire scene, so I'm just gonna go wildcard and select all, and everything will get selected and will be brought into this layer, fairly simple. What's next? I'm going to rename this to Holdout. That's where I preserve the black color. That's what I get the black color in. By the way, I've seen this a lot when students do freak out when they click on this disable layer and they expect the scene to be disappeared because that's how you check whether if the content is in the layer. But the problem is you need to switch the visibility to be able to switch to the active layer. So this catches many students off guard. So what you can do is to click on the matte layer. Now your matte layer has been selected. Now if you click on this disable icon, you can see the scene vanishes and you load the scene. That's how you check whether you actually have the content on the layer. Another common problem that I've seen happening is usually this scene brings the lights with it as well. So the way that you fix that problem, I'm just gonna switch to viewport 2.0 and we can see if we've got all the lights in here, is by middle click and dragging the light icon in here and just simply exclude all lights from the scene. We used to have, back in Maya 2017 or 18, we used to have a disable icon on the layer now. Instead, we have a tick box, does the exact same thing. So that's how you exclude lights from a layer. Very intuitive, very simple. Now let's move on to actual colors and see how we can assign them to each collection. So I'm gonna select the holdout right click and go create material override. You can name it if you want, so I can call it material override black, which makes it easier to identify. And in here, I'm gonna call this black underscore subsurface. If you remember, that was the name. And if I press enter, my material gets linked to the surface group, to the shading group of the material. So if I go and turn off, use default material, that's the material now I have been given to this collection. This is fairly simple, as you can see. Um, all you need to do is just to be mindful of some naming conventions and the rest is pretty straightforward. Now next is to create a holdout for the red color. I'm just gonna right click, go create collection, and I'm going to call this red underscore mat underscore C-O-L-L. -L. I can actually rename the holdout to holdout underscore C-O-L-L -L, so we know it's a collection. And then I'm gonna right click on red mat C-O-L-L -L and create a material override. Before I do that, you kinda need to remind yourself what's on this layer right now. Well, right now, there's nothing on the layer. So what I can do is to go in here into custom now we know what to put into the types node. It's going to be a mesh. And now all you need to do is just to think about, all right, what object I would like to target. It's, in this case, it's called tire. 
So if I put in tire and asterisk after that or wildcard, if I go select, it only selects this particular naming convention with whatever comes after it. In that case, there's nothing after it, so it brings only this node. And now I can go in here and turn it on and off. Now with this object on this layer, I can create material override. I can right click and go create material override. I'm not going to leave it as an override one. I'm going to call this override red. So we know what we're overriding. And I'm going to address the material that I created in the hypershade, which was a surface shader. So red underscore SS was the name. I don't need to include shading group. If I press enter, shading group will get added. And if I click away, you can see now only wheels are getting this color. Very, very simple. You can actually right click on it. That's what I usually do. I'm going to go in here and label it. So I know that this um, red mat holds red color. Totally optional though. I'm going to do the same thing. Again, I'm going to speed up a little bit. So in here, I'm going to call this green underscore mat underscore C O L L. Filter it. The filter needs to be mesh. I would like to select the body. Look at the body in here. Now I have body underscore main, body underscore back wing. Um, so this means that I can just type in body underscore star. And when I go select, it actually selects both. Perfect. I'm going to right click on the green mat, go to material override, call this green and assign a green shader that I previously made. How simple is that? I can again be a little bit fancy about it and right click and go green. Perfect. Doing the same thing. Create collection for blue this time. So I'm going to go blue underscore mat underscore C O L L for collection. I can actually label it right now. And what's going to happen is I'm going to go to custom set the types to mesh and all the chromey parts that I would like to assign. It's called Chrome. Simple. So it's important to actually think about the naming convention that you would like to use. I'm going to go select all. Now this has been added to the uh, collection. I'm going to right click on it and create material override. This is going to be blue and in the override material, I'm going to link it to the material that I previously created. There you have it. Now you know how to create more overrides. Now the trick that I always use is not to spend the time and repopulate this, but to create a preset or template and repurpose that template, which is a very nifty trick. Let's see how we can achieve that. So once you're done with the first pass, with the first layer, including three colors, you can select the layer, right click on it and go export selected. This is going to be ID underscore mat underscore temp for template. So if you have another project that you want to use this structure, let's say I am going to actually delete it here. So I have absolutely nothing. I can actually now go to import, import user template and ID mat template. And there I have it in no time at all. I actually get the all the folders and all the structures in no time. I'm going to switch my visibility and I get the content. Sometimes if you see the fonts in italic, you're just going to go in here and accept the changes. That's it. Very simple, very intuitive. And that's how you create ID mats in Maya. ID mats are very useful and I always use them in my composite. I hope you found this video useful and uh, use it in your own projects. If you have any questions, let me know. Until the next how-to video, see you later.